Hello everyone, my name is Alexey Molchinov and I'm a world champion freediver. Today we'll talk about seven ways how to improve your breath hold, make it safer, more enjoyable. Number one is theory. And it is very important to understand theory before you start practice, because we have all this very new to us and very uh, like unfamiliar, very sometimes maybe uncomfortable sensations in our body, which we don't understand what it is. And we want to learn about our oxygen reserves, where we have oxygen stored and why we actually want to breathe and what is hypoxia, what is hypercapnia. So all these things, it is better to understand, to study, uh, because this will be very, very helpful in your understanding how to hold your breath better, how to enjoy your breath hold better. And I would recommend highly to start from theory. Number two, it is before you start practice, you want to see if you have opportunity to find someone to guide you, some instructor, trainer, because this will save you a lot of time. A lot of time when we start practicing something, we don't see ourselves from the side. We of course can do this with the cameras, analyzing, but lacking experience, it will take us more time to figure out how to do correct technique. So qualified instructor is super critical for safe and fast progress. So take a look at it. I would say that this point uh, will affect your progress very much. Number three, it is proper breathing. And before the breath hold, Preparational breathing is one of the key elements to improve your breath hold, make it more enjoyable, make it longer, safer as well. So I would say that preparational breathing, this phase, everything you do before the breath hold is super critical. It will give you a boost, like an increase in performance up to two times or more. It's not like something like 10% or 20% if you prepare properly. No, it's, it's going to increase your breath hold like a lot. An example I can give is like me, for example, doing my breath hold with not much preparation when I'm uh, diving very quick to do some photos or to do videos and I'm diving very quick to the reef, then I don't have time to do preparation breathing and uh, my breath hold is relatively short. I would say that it's like 30 seconds, one minute, and then I, I want to breathe already. Uh, in opposed to that, when I'm, ha when I'm preparing for a long dive, like for example for the record dive, and I have um, like five minutes to prepare even two minutes to prepare properly, then my breath hold will increase towards three minutes, four minutes, and it'll be like a very comfortable phase of first one and two minutes. So preparation breathing is very important. And if you want to practice now a little bit, you can try to calm down your breathing and see with which amplitude you can breathe and you will still feel comfortable. And try to reduce this amplitude of breathing to the lowest possible without the prolonged exhale inhale. So this phase when you have the prolonged exhale is very good for the first couple of cycles of breathing when you maybe feel a bit of tension and you want to relax. So that's first. <sighs> but then to prepare for the breath hold you want to have tidal breathing, very shallow breathing when you don't have the prolonged exhale and you have symmetrical breathing with a small inhale, small exhale, small inhale, small exhale. And this symmetrical breathing will calm you down even more and will stabilize your like inner state. And then after a, a bit of like maybe let's say 30 seconds or one minute of breathing in this way, then you do deep inhale. And then it's very important to relax after the deep inhale before the breath hold because if we start the breath hold with a like elevated rib cage, shoulders, and we don't lower our ribs and shoulders, it's going to be much harder to hold our breath. So th those are the phases like the breathing, tidal breathing, deep inhale, relaxation, right? And then you, with practice, you will learn more details about this phase, and this phase will help your breath hold very much. Number four, it is importance of mindset. How you think about the breath hold is very important. Do you approach the breath hold as a challenge where you want to like really do it and do this with a bit of will of power? So this mindset will not allow you to really relax deeply. Like the, you want to think about the breath hold as a discovery of your abilities, like as a challenge to calm down as much as possible, not a challenge to achieve them biggest possible time, because with this you would be making it harder for yourself and it will be tense. So the mindset should be like discovery, like a gentle discovery of your abilities and enjoying the process. If you don't think about the breath hold as something like where you overcome or like 
push your boundaries, but you think about it as gentle discovery of your abilities, uh, the mindset is going to be that you enjoy the process and you look for some ch challenges along the way, like you see if there's any like tensions in your body or if you want to breathe and you react to this breathing a bit more than you would like to. So those are the challenges. Practicing and uh, facing those challenges from time to time, you want to uh, think about those challenges like tension or urge to breathe as something you would like to overcome, but in an in a interesting and unusual way. So in general, when we face the challenges, let's say in other activities, we sometimes we can overcome these challenges with a bit of more willpower. So when we do push-ups, when we do squats, when we run, we like want to push through sometimes, like when you need a bit of willpower. So in free diving, uh, that's quite opposite. Like to be able to do longer breath hold, but at the same time, make sure you don't overtrain and overload your nervous system. We want to like get into this observer state when we observe our uh, body from a little, bit, a little bit of a distance and we think about our reactions to urge to breathe, to discomfort, and we can decide if you want to react uh, to this urge to breathe or not. So this ability to create a, uh, a bit of a distance between yourself and between uh, what you observe uh, is quite an interesting uh, part of freediving and this uh, like mental state where you observe the challenges you create this distance, a bit of space between yourself and these challenges, and at the same time you uh, enjoy the process because you don't react and you don't get tense because you want to breathe. Uh, this is their concept, the philosophy in free diving, and then if you follow this route, your mental state will be much more calm and uh, it'll be just more fun as well. So think about this, how do you approach breath hold? And alternating your mental state and um, point of view on breath hold and being just more flexible with your approach and like perspective is very important as well. Number five, relaxation. So relaxation is a skill where we learn how to relax every bit of our body, like very, very small steps, starting from the face, going through the neck, our shoulders, shoulder blades, lower back, front part of the rib cage, lower part of our rib cage, abdominal muscles. So we do the body scan and the most important area is our face, our neck and our body. Of course we can then proceed and relax our arms and legs as well, but in general for the breath hold this is our most important area and relaxation includes mastering the body scan when we learn how to become more efficient with this technique. So for example, if we take face and body scan for our face, it will take time to get used to uh, like scanning our face and go in, in steps, starting from the forehead, then go into the eyes, eye muscles, mimic muscles, lips, and even the tongue, and then go in to the, towards the neck, the throat. So it will take some time to get used to those areas, to relax them but with more practice, will be faster. Then after body scan, there are more techniques to study and it's increasing awareness, like observing different areas of your body and observing their rhythm of breathing, for example, how your diaphragm moves when you do the uh, tidal breathing before the dive, what happens in your body when you hold your breath and being very much uh, aware of changed uh, sensations in the body, for example, your CO2 level grows, like do you respond with your body to these raised levels of CO2 with a bit of tension, maybe. Then there is technique of attention deconcentration. It's learning how to control your attention even more precisely and in an example of our vision field and making sure we can relax and not react and not focus on objects. This is the technique of attention deconcentration when we learn how to stop focusing on the objects and uh, defocus the, the whole area of vision and we train our uh, attention not to get focused when we, for example, move or we free dive or we do breath hold. So our uh, attention becomes much more trained to stay defocused and then we save energy and we can refocus this uh, attention in, into our body. To summarize, deep relaxation is a very interesting technique. There's a lot of specific exercises to do that and uh, 
when we start studying breath hold, you start with the simple ones, the body scan, and then with more practice, you go throughout like more complex techniques to improve your relaxation even more. But this will ensure that you spend less oxygen, and that's very, very important for the breath hold. Number six, uh, exercises for improved mobility of our ribcage and improved flexibility of breathing muscles like diaphragm, intercostal muscles, and muscles around the shoulder blades. So that is very important, and to increase uh, the mobility, one of the specific exercises and courses I can recommend is foundational breath work on the platform. And uh, why I want to do this? Because if we hold our breath, one of the reasons I actually want to breathe is not our resistance to hypoxia or resistance to hypercapnia, increased levels of CO2. The initial desire to breathe is actually desire to exhale because our breathing muscles are not prepared for the breath hold. Like we hold our breath and then we hold it for like several minutes. It's just hard for our breathing muscles to stay in this like stretched position, right? So like to improve it, that's the best thing you can do. You can do breathing exercises and make sure that you have less effort to do the inhale, less discomfort holding this full inhale for a prolonged period of time. And to do so, we can do a variety of exercises, like a variety of movements, uh, static exercises, dynamic exercises with rotation, arm swings, arm rotations. So all those exercises will help a lot. So to summarize, the importance of breathing exercises is very high and I would say that very soon after you start breath holds to start doing those breathing exercises because they will increase the comfort of the breath hold a lot and if you are much more comfortable having the having breath hold with a full inhale uh, the breath hold will be longer and the last one number seven it is importance of regular trainings so like with any type of uh, skill when we learn the skill it's not enough to do just one exercise or two or three or five so we want to build it in our calendar how many times per week we want to do breathing exercises. Is it, if it's just one, it might be not enough. You might uh, like progress, but very slowly. Two times per week will be already really good because your nervous system will get rested. Like three days a week is even better. Four, five, six, seven is harder because you want to make sure you recover between the exercises. And it is possible to recover if you do everyday trainings, but with a lot of attention to like all their phases of recovery, like sleep, food, water, active rest as well, other types of activity. So if you plan active recovery, and in general you feel like your recovery is, is very good, then you can do those uh, more frequently, but be very, very careful with that because like everyday trainings might be tricky and in free diving, our nervous system is the system which is under a lot of load. And if you do a lot of breath holds, you might overtrain and your nervous system will be like just tired from all these breath holds. To get an idea how to train properly, of course, it's better if you have some schools or coaches around who can help you and design training plan for yourself. And you can find instructors or on our platform or just an internet around you. Uh, another way to train, it can be look for their programs that, for example, we have on our platform, we have BT and BT Plus, which is base training and base training plus programs. And then uh, those programs can give you an idea how to train. So in BT, we have study breath hold section. In BT Plus, we have some master classes from one of the best coaches in the world. And those programs that are usually like in BT Plus, it's like programs which consist of several weeks of specific exercises. In BT, it can be progression which you can uh, follow for like a lot of the months or even years. So this can be a way for you to have consistency, have uh, actual instruction, how to progress. And this is something which makes it much more easy to act, practice because you might build this exercise into your calendar, yes, but if you don't have a specific plan, specific knowledge what to do, that might be frustrating and that might be just some like an obstacle which will not allow you to progress. So regular training, understanding how you will be able to do the regular training uh, is very, very important as well. Okay, thank you for watching the video. And uh, if you like the content of our channel, uh, continue following the channel, subscribe, and also recommend it to your friends who are non-free divers, maybe free divers as well. Uh, and even if you learn some skills from these videos, from this channel, make sure you never free dive alone. It's very important to have like a body and the body should be qualified free diver. So like you want to trust your life when you free dive to someone who knows basic rules of safety, who practiced in the courses, how to do the rescues, etc., etc. right? So never try breath holds in the water alone. You can do dry breath holds, it's safe, but not in the water, please. Okay, so have a good practice.
and see you in the next videos. Thank you.